Welcome to Pride 159. I'm your host, Sheila Friday. This show is geared towards our goal of providing open, honest, and transparent communication to our stakeholders. It is the vision of our superintendent, Dr. Mabel Alfred. Pride in 159 is produced, directed, and co-hosted by the students here at Colin Powell Middle School. Let's meet my co-host for today, Ms. Essence Martin, who is an eighth grade and track star here at Colin Powell. Welcome, Essence, and thanks for co-hosting our show. Thank you, Ms. Friday. I am excited about the opportunity to co-host our show today. Debbie Myers Martin has been a public servant for over 20 years. From her role as Chief of Staff for the former State Representative David Miller to Trustee and Village President of Olympia Fields, she has represented our suburbs with genuine concern for our well-being. She now serves as the State Representative for the 38th District, which includes several cities and villages in the Southland. Let's welcome our today's guest, State Representative Debbie Myers Martin, to our show. Uh, thank you to Ms. Friday and Essence for having me on the show. I am so excited to have this opportunity to be with these amazing students who are just awesome in their producing and co hosting and directing. So, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Let's start our show with a couple of questions. Why were you inspired to become a state representative? Well, many reasons. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I knew that it was an open seat and I wanted to continue the traditional great leadership that we had had in Springfield with a strong voice representing the 38th district. And so I was asked by mayors to, to run and I was very happy to do that because I did want to represent our district uh, valiantly and, and certainly in a, in a strong way. What was the process for becoming a state representative? Well, first of all, you do have to get people to sign your petition. And so for a state representative, that's 500 signatures. But you always need to have about three times uh, that amount just to make sure that all of your signatures are good. Once you sign those petitions, once you turn in those petitions, uh, then you begin your campaign. Uh, you wait for those signatures to be verified as good and you begin your campaign, you, you get a campaign committee, and then you actually go out to meet the voters uh, to convince them that you will be a good candidate, your platform, what you represent, what you stand for, what you want to work towards in Springfield. So all of that is part of the campaign, and then of course is the election. What advice do you have for any students my age if they are interested in pursuing politics in the future? I would suggest that you volunteer. Volunteer on a local level with your mayors and your, your trustees at, in the town that you live in. Certainly volunteering for legislators, state representatives, anywhere that you can get that experience to find out what the political strategy is like, uh, what you need to, uh, to be a strong candidate, and certainly the mechanics of running for office, because it is a process. Thank you. You're welcome. What has been your biggest accomplishment as our state representative? Well, I was fortunate to be in Springfield when the Capitol bill was being voted upon. And because of that, I was able to bring back to the 38th district over $20 million in funding for infrastructure improvements, uh, for roads and bridges, uh, for just capital improvements. And so that was definitely one of my biggest accomplishments. We certainly held together as Southland legislators to get funding for the airport uh, for over $200 million for the airport. And then finally, a casino for the Southland. Uh, for too many years, we've been losing millions of dollars of people traveling through our district going to Indiana uh, to gamble. And so therefore, we now finally have a license for South Suburban 
casino. And so those are just some of the accomplishments, certainly passing the minimum wage bill, pay equity for women, uh, senior exemptions that you don't have to file every year. It was just a really great time to be in Springfield. So you shared a lot of information with me and with Essence. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our community? Well, just one other thing, uh, the census. The 2020 census yes. is coming up this year. And it is extremely important that we get, fun that we get counted. Mm -hmm. And for every person that is not counted, we lose $1,400 per person. So, for example, if you have a town of 15,000 people, but only 12,000, only 10,000 people, to make it simple, don't get, get counted, then you lose those 5,000 people times $1,400. That's a lot of money to lose. And you lose resources when you do not get counted as well. So it's just very important for people to either go online, fill out a paper form, or go to their census office to be counted. So this year, the census is available online? It will be, yes. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's transformation. Well, stay wrapped. On behalf of our school district, our students here, our superintendent, I want to thank you so much for everything that you're doing for our district. I want to especially thank you for taking our time to come in today, spend a little time with us, and give us insight. We really do appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for the invitation and ask me back any time. Well, we will ask you back. This has been Pride in 159, and I am your co-host, Shelly Friday, along with Essence Martin. Thank you for watching our show today. We ask you to continue to stay connected, stay tuned, and stay engaged. And last but not least, watch us soar. Watch, watch us soar. soar.